open Google Maps without a second thought. I'm standing somewhere in the middle of the city and somehow this little phone just knows where I am. I type in where I want to go and instantly it draws a path like magic. But how does it know where I am? Before maps can guide me to my destination, it has to first find me. So let's start at the beginning with satellites, the science and the maths behind geolocation. There are over 25 satellites orbiting the earth to find your exact location and your phone needs only 4 of them to lock onto you and it does so using a method called trilateration. The first satellite sends a signal, my phone hears it and measures how long it took to arrive. Multiply that time by the speed of light and you get a distance. That distance is a sphere, meaning I could be anywhere on this surface. A second satellite gives me another sphere. Now I'm somewhere on this circle where the two spheres overlap. A third satellite narrows it to two possible points, one here on earth, the other floating in space. I'm clearly not up there, so this is me. Now here's the tricky part. My phone's clock is not perfectly accurate. Even a one millisecond difference means the satellite thinks I'm about 300 kilometers away from where I actually am because GPS signals travel at the speed of light. The fourth satellite's job is to fix that difference, syncing my phone's clock with its own atomic clock. Once the timing is perfect, the distances from the first three satellites are also perfect. And now my position is logged. Now that we know exactly where we're located on the map, the next step would be how to get to my destination. So maps treats a city like a graph. A graph consists of nodes and edges. Nodes can be intersections in a city and edges can be the roads. Roads have a cost. This cost can be associated to the distance between one node and another. Here's a smaller version of a city map. Start is 0, destination is 5. The numbers are the travel costs between the intersections. We'll start with Dijkstra's algorithm. It works by keeping a table of the cheapest cost so far to reach every point. Here you can consider the cost to be the distance between two intersections. The cost is called the G value. Infinity just means we haven't found a way to get there yet. We start here. Cost to reach node 0 is 0. For every other node, we don't know the cost yet, so we write infinity. We visit node 0 first. From 0, we can go to node 1 for cost 2 and node 3 for cost 6. So we write 2 and 6 in the table and mark node 0 as visited. Now we pick the not yet visited node with the smallest cost, that is node 1, which has a cost 2. From node 1, we can go to node 2 by adding 5, so node 2 becomes 7. The next smallest is node 3 with cost 6, so we visit it. From node 3, going to node 4 adds 10, so node 4 becomes 16. We visit node 2, which has a cost 7. From 2 we can go to node 5 for 7 plus 9 that is 16 and to node 4 for 7 plus 6 that is 13. 13 is better than 16 so we update node 4 to 13. Next we visit node 4 which has a cost of 13 and check its neighbors. Nothing improves so the table stays the same. Next we visit node 5 which has a cost 16. The shortest route to node 5 is now 0, 1, 2 and 5 and the total cost is 16. Dijkstra just keeps picking the closest unvisited node, uses it to try to lower the cost of its neighbors, marks it visited and repeats. That's how we find the shortest paths. Let's now take a look at an optimization of Dijkstra's, the A-star algorithm. 
A star works like Dijkstra, but with an extra helper H, there is a heuristic number of how far the node is from the destination. We add G that is the weight on the edge and H that is the heuristic number to get F and always pick the spot with the smallest F. We start at node 0. G is 0 here, H is 10, so F is 10. Everything else is still infinity because we haven't reached them yet. From node 0, going to node 1 makes G equals 2, H equals 8, so F equals 10. Going to node 3 makes G equals 6, H equals 7, so F equals 13. We pick the smallest F, that is node 1. From node 1, going to node 2 makes g equals 7, h equals 5, so f equals 12. From node 2, going to node 5 makes g equals 16, h equals 0, so f equals 16. Going to node 4 makes g equals 13, h equals 3, so f equals 16 as well. Node 3 has f equals 13, so we visit it before the 16s. From here, node 4 would still be 16, so nothing changes. From node 4, reaching node 5 would still be 16, no improvement. We've reached the goal. Path is 0, 1, 2, 5 with total cost 16. A star founded by checking fewer places than Dijkstra because a heuristic variable guided the search. That's why Google Maps and other modern navigation systems use variations of A star and other smart algorithms to get you there faster. Now that we know the shortest route, Google Maps has another trick up its sleeve, real-time traffic. Maps collects anonymous location data from millions of phones. If a lot of devices are moving slower than expected on a road, that road turns orange or red. That's how Maps can reroute you on the fly, not just finding the shortest distance but the fastest route right now. And that's how, from satellites in space to algorithms on your phone, maps get you exactly where you need to go. You've arrived at your destination.